Disney Plus has pulled in over 41 million subscribers. Obviously, Disney's strategy is to create really strong, branded, uh, premium content. And I would say that seems like it's working pretty well. They've basically gotten half the amount of subscribers that Netflix has in the US North America market in three months. You may notice my lovely t-shirt, my little uh, Mandalorian graphic here. So we're gonna talk about Disney Plus. And there's some new uh, reports out about the Disney Plus subscriber estimate counts. And I like the intro to this article. Disney Plus said, this is the way back when it launched in November and boy have viewers followed. According to a new report, Disney Plus has pulled in over 41 million subscribers since they launched, this was like October 11th or 12th or something. So in three months, basically, over 40 million subscribers. It's seven bucks a month, uh, but that's free. So, you know, they did the tie up with Verizon. If you have uh, like a primo Verizon plan, you can get it for free for the first year. So they're not necessarily trying to monetize all of these users, but Obviously, Disney's strategy is to create really strong, branded, uh, premium content. And I would say that seems like it's working pretty well. Um, I have the t-shirt to prove it. And now, then this article says, it, is it, Disney is spending $24 billion to ramp up programming. The one caveat with this, I would just say, is I'm not sure over what period of time that $24 billion, I would guess that's not in one year. I think that's probably over like two years. But even if it's $12 billion in one year, that's roughly about what Netflix is doing each year. I don't know if they've been able to double literally somewhat overnight um, the amount of spending that Netflix is spending each year. And they have much fewer shows, right, than Netflix does. So uh, $24 billion in one year, that seems like a little bit, like a little high to me. It said, this article says $10 billion for Netflix. That's wrong. I think Netflix is actually around 12 It actually might be a touch higher uh, spending each year. $8.6 billion for Amazon Prime, a billion for Apple. Um, NBC's Peacock just announced also they're spending, and it looks like they're spending $2 billion over the next two years. So a billion dollars a year. So Disney and Netflix are right at the top in terms of spending. Then it's Amazon Prime. Uh, and then you have basically Apple and NBC in the same boat. We don't really know where Time Warner and HBO Max is at. I would imagine they're definitely going to be higher than a billion dollars a year. They just forked over, forked over $500 million. Now, that's not per year. $500 million in a multi-year deal for South Park and some other shows as well. They did other deals. So at and has got a lot of money. Uh, Time Warner is a $100 billion acquisition in and of itself. So um, those are the two big players coming out this spring is Peacock, NBC's initiative, and HBO Max, which is AT&T's uh, initiative. So one takeaway from this is it's a great time to be a content creator. If you can create premium mid to long form content, this is a really good time to be in that business because <laughs> these guys are going hog wild in terms of creating content. Now, Disney's gonna release earnings first week of Feb, so in about two weeks-ish. Netflix is releasing earnings uh, next week or the week after, um, right at the end of January, so it's coming up soon. And Netflix has some data out here as well. So this is from a couple days ago. You can see that Netflix's North American subscriber growth has plateaued. Um, even looks like it went down a little bit from one quarter to another, but it has not been able to break the 70 million uh, subscriber count in North America. So that's more than just the United States. Take into account the 41 million subscriber count number for Disney. Now, I don't know, we don't know where all those subscribers are. I don't think that I would imagine that most of those subscribers are from the from the US, possibly North America. I don't even think Disney Plus has really launched internationally. Maybe it has. Um, but let's just assume that Disney has at least 30 million subscribers in North America. 
We've basically gotten half the amount of subscribers that Netflix has in the US North America market in three months. I mean, that to me is a very big win. Um, I don't think these numbers have been confirmed. So these, but these are estimates from these different data providers. Um, and so if that's, if that's roughly where these numbers are, I, I think the, I think Disney stock is going to do fantastically. All things remaining equal with the rest of their business. They obviously have a, a variety of businesses besides just what they're doing with Disney Plus. But from a Disney, if the other businesses can report strong results in a couple of weeks, coupled with this pretty massive win, it would be at least half of Netflix. If if they have more than 35 million subscribers, if that 41, if you know at least 35 of that's from North America, then that's actually more than half of Netflix's customer base. Disney Plus got in three months. That's phenomenal. Um, now, the rest of this article goes on to say that the rest of the growth that Netflix is trying to get, Netflix collectively says they have 158 million subscribers. This is the end of Q3 of 2019, end of September. And they want to add 100 million subscribers will come from places like India and Southeast Asia. And we've spoken about this many times in the show. The problem with that is that users in Asia and Southeast Asia, they don't pay as much money as U.S. North American customers do for media. And I would also lump Europe into that. Maybe not as much of a haircut as, say, India, Southeast Asia. Um, but certainly the U.S. market is, is paying the prettiest penny for media. So that's why I think, again, those Disney Plus numbers are so important to look at. And then you think about what can Disney Plus do as they expand also on a lower cost structure in the first place at seven bucks a month compared to Netflix, which I don't know, maybe is around 12 bucks a month ish in the United States. Looks like they're roughly at 10 bucks a month in Southeast Asia, Netflix. But what this article is alluding to, we've, we've said this many times on the show, Netflix is going to have to lower those rates internationally if they hope to achieve those kinds that kind of growth and that's just my challenge that's just my challenge with the netflix business and i think look it doesn't mean that netflix can't have a profitable business it doesn't mean that netflix can't have a successful business it just means that the multiples that netflix is commanding in the market are too high in my opinion and that as we see the competition this is this is we've only had two competitors uh, Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus. Now we're about to get another double whammy in the next few months. HBO Max, don't underestimate AT&T, and NBC. Who is NBC owned by? Comcast. I mean, these are these are heavyweight players coming in the into the industry. You can't underestimate them because there's no supply side network effect, which means any of these players that are massive con media conglomerates can come into the market get 10 plus million subscribers seemingly overnight just because I'm Comcast and I literally have all these cable subscribers. So Comcast Peacock's model is that if you have a Comcast cable TV subscription, you are going to get Peacock, I think for free. They're going to have ads in it. And then you can also get it if you don't have Comcast cable and I think you pay a fee or something like that. But these players are going to get scale. They literally have scale because they're massive conglomerates. And they have the supply because there's no supply side network effects. So it's really just a matter of what rights do you have? How much money are you going to pay for premium shows? Look at HBO getting South Park. Great decision on HBO's part. Love South Park. Now you got a five-legged horse race with some of the biggest companies in the world. Disney, Apple. Oh, sorry. I forgot about Amazon. Six-legged. Disney, Apple, Amazon, um, uh, Peacock, HBO. And Netflix. And you know what? They could all have tens of millions of customers. But again, what kind of multiple are you going to put on that business? I'm, I, you, I, you're not putting the multiples that Netflix used to get when it was just Netflix. And they literally didn't have any competition. I mean, they had, I guess, like kind of Hulu competition and Amazon Prime competition. But Amazon Prime is more just a stickiness add on to their existing subscription product. And then it helps Amazon justify the price increase that they put onto Amazon Prime. But again, you know, it's, 
really now the race is on. I think the next, this 2020 year, you're going to start to see, I think you see Netflix's multiples come down. Maybe they hit the growth. Maybe they do these things. Maybe, they, you know, maybe the P&L hits what they expect it to hit. But are they still going to get the same multiple from investors? I don't think so. I think that's where the the story of Netflix and 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 how much confidence you put in their long term capability to have def- some kind of moat or really lack thereof, which is my point. The defensibility, um, the margin compression, which we've already spoken about. They're doing some wonky things with the balance sheet in terms of how they're registering this twelve billion dollars a year. Um, not necessarily as like a hard expense, right? So they're kind of capitalizing it as an asset. I assume that gets then depreciated over a certain number of years. You're not seeing the full picture of, hey, what's this business like if I have to spend $12 billion a year on content as a, as a hard expense that hits the P&L? I can tell you that P&L does not look pretty if, <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're attributing all these costs to, to uh, as an expense in the same year. So again, not so bullish long term on Netflix. Disney, great decision. And you know what? They can justify $24 billion because Disney is investing in brand, in creating these characters and these entities. And then guess what? They have they have like a physical plat- pseudo platform business, right? Because now I have characters. I can sell a bunch of baby Yoda stuff. Hence my T-shirt. You know Disney's getting paid for this T-shirt. Um, I can now build theme parks around it. I can now, you know, uh, create all this derivative, like uh, you know, uh, uh, comics or other content around it, and and shows and events and Broadway musicals and like all these other things. And if you remember, there's a crazy picture that. Walt drew, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, where it shows all the different entities and all these lines with, between all the different entities. That's what Disney's got. If I was Netflix, if I wasn't trying to create supply side network effects, that'd be my first thing. How do I create supply side network effects? But if I wasn't going to do that, how could I try and move more into some of these like analog um, complementary businesses, that the brands I create, um, like Stranger Things, you know, how could I start to monetize stranger things in other arenas. The interesting little anecdote I'll give about Disney Plus and how much emphasis they put on these premium brands. You may have noticed there's no official Baby Yoda toys for the holiday season. Why weren't there any official Baby Yoda toys? Because Disney was not going to go tell Mattel or Hasbro or any of the toy companies that they work with um, about Baby Yoda pre the launch of Disney plus and Mandalorian. This was like first, second week of October. So by the time the show came out, that's literally when all the toy companies found out about baby Yoda. And that means that they weren't able to turn around a toy fast enough for the holiday season, a baby Yoda toy. I think baby Yoda toys are just about to come out and they couldn't, they, the lead time was, was too short. Um, so it just goes to show you the, how much emphasis Disney is putting on the premium brand entity and kind of trying to say Netflix is like a JV. They're a JV movie studio. We're the premium movie studio. We create the brands, we create the icons, and we monetize the hell out of these things through all of our other channels. And that's their business. And guess what? It's worked really well for them. Bob Iger is a beast. So again, maybe Netflix still hits all their earnings and their, and their projections. I don't think the multiple sticks with them as we see 2020 unfold. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.